Hello friends, welcome back to SQL with Manoj. In my previous video of constraint series, I talked about primary keys and today I'm going to talk about unique key constraints, right? So let's go ahead and check what exactly is a unique key constraint. Okay, and we'll talk about all of these things in points. So a unique key is just like a primary key that uniquely identifies every row in a database table, right? So how it is different from a primary key? As I told you in my previous video, primary key will also uniquely identify every row in a database table. Let's see ahead. In the second point it says the unique key constraint on a table column enforces unique values. That is no duplicate value just like a primary key. But it allow a single null value, right? But primary key do not allow null values. So this is the only difference between unique key and primary key that, you know, unique key will allow null values. Primary key will also, you know, enforces unique values but they will not allow a null value to be inserted right but still you know there is only one value you can insert so there can be only one row in a table that can have this null value the third point says that a table can have one or more than one unique key defined on many columns or more than one columns right but only one primary key so this point says that a table can have only one primary key but they can have multiple unique key defined on different different columns in a particular table right you can create unique key on a table with a create table statement in two ways and later with the alter table at constraint statement, right? Just like primary key, you can do the same with unique key also and let's go ahead and uh, do that. So I'm taking same example, right? I have created a table employee with employee ID that has a primary key constraint on it. Okay, so what I'll do is for to create a unique key, what I'll do is I'll add a new column that is SSN. Okay, so SSN column is a social security number and that should also be unique to each and every person, right? So what I can do is rather than defining it as a primary key and you know, if I've already defined this as a primary key, I cannot define this as a primary key, right? Because a table can have only one primary key. So to maintain uniqueness across this column, what I can enforce is, is a unique key constraint on this table, right? So, so I'll define the data type as where care 30. Okay, so the first way is, you know, just like the similar way primary key, I can define unique key, right? So this will create a unique key on this particular SSN column, right? See, you can see, right? And as you expand the keys, you can see the unique identifier is created here, right? With the name UQ underscore employee and with some random ID, right? So uh, similar to this, you can create multiple uh, unique constraints like uh, uh, an employee can have an email ID right email id with where care let's say 512 length okay similar to this you can have a email id also right so uh, let's go ahead and create an employee with the email id okay so see so you you got a table that has one primary key and two columns as unique keys, right? Let's expand the keys section and you can see two columns having unique keys. You know, you can see here that uh, the naming convention has been uh, set up by SQL Server by choosing some random numbers. Okay, so how can we create uh, customized and named unique keys? So what I'll do is I'll drop the table. Okay, and again create the table with named unique keys okay so what i'll do is i'll remove all these columns from here and just like the primary key right what we did was in the while creating primary key we added a constraint constraint name was pk underscore id okay and it was primary key on employee id column okay similar to this we can have constraint unique key underscore SSN okay unique on which column SSN column okay and okay comma and we can have a one more constraint over here right that is UK underscore email on email column right so email id column okay so this is the way you can create constraints named constraints or named unique key and primary keys right so i'll just refresh it and you can see right the primary key unique key and 
so the primary key and unique key are created with named constraints right so this is the one way you know we created with the create table okay and another way is you can use the alter table at constraint statement let's go ahead and see that right so I'll drop the table again okay and I'll take the original script to create the table without the without any constraint right now so I will remove the unique key okay I'll keep the primary key as it is for now okay because we are discussing about unique key constraint right so I've created the table okay and let's see the table right now we don't have you know keys over here unique keys over here right so what I'll do is I'll use the alter table statement alter table dbo dot employ okay add unique key on which particular table on SSN right sorry SSN right so this is how you get a unique key over SSN and to create a unique key over email ID just issue a another alter statement add unique key with the email ID right execute it and you will get the unique key as well so again you can see right the named the naming convention is chosen by SQL Server itself by some random IDs right so you can still create named unique constraints by using some more options right like this uh, first of all what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll delete them okay uh, okay so to delete them what you can also do is you can check the script what it is used okay so new table and script constraint drop to clipboard and I'll paste it okay so these are the two scripts that it used right let's click no right so I'll remove these alter table drop constraint and alter table drop constraint right so I'll drop both of these unique constraint and let's create both of these constraint by adding some names by adding their names right so just like primary key you can you have to specify with alter table table name add constraint name so constraint uk underscore ssn okay unique this and another statement as uk underscore email and email id right that's it so this way you can create named constraints sorry so this is way so this way you can create named constraint on these particular unique ids right okay so let's go to the another point so the sixth point says that unique key can be composite key containing more than one column so just like primary key you can create a unique key based upon you know unique key based upon one or more columns right so let's say if this table had some particular uh, let's say uh, you uh, password and username right so password go will go with the email id right so you can create a combination password where care let's say 1000 okay so while creating these so you can create the combination of these two columns as unique right so what you can do is you can specify here constraint uk underscore email underscore password so this is the name that I'm choosing you can even put you can put anything else unique and on what all columns email ID column and password column right so password is a keyword so what I'll do is I'll enclose it with the square brackets right and the best practice is to always you know have your columns and object names in uh, square brackets okay so so this is where I can create a new table right so let's uh, drop the table that we created previously okay so this is the way you can create you know a unique composite columns so we have this employee ID as a primary key and this SSN as a unique key uh, but these two particular columns as composite unique key right let's go ahead and execute it okay and just see 
I'll refresh the table and columns okay and I'll go to keys right so you can see here there is a PK right there is a unique key over this particular SSN and there is another unique key that is over email and password so this is how you can create a unique constraint on a composite column right okay now it says that unique constraint can be referenced by a foreign key constraint okay so I'll take this up when I'm talking about a foreign key okay and the last point says that in SQL so on creating a unique key on a table a non clustered index is created okay so this is all about indexes I've not talked of not talked about these so whenever you create a unique key column okay so whenever you create a unique key on a particular column it will create a non clustered index right and similar goes with the primary key uh, whenever you create a primary key on a particular table it will create a corresponding clustered index on that particular table okay and you can just you can just see right this is the primary key that we created earlier and it created a unique clustered index the key column of this index is employee ID right and if you check the unique keys and if you check the unique key columns right so this is a non clustered index so these features are by default so whenever you create a primary key the primary key will create a cluster index by default and whenever you create a unique key it will create a non clustered index by default okay yeah so so this is all about unique key constraint and in my next video I'll talk about referential integrity and that is foreign key constraint okay till then stay tuned and please like the video if you really like it and please let me know your comments and suggestions okay so that I can incorporate all of them in my next videos uh, or if you want me to talk about something specific I can put up a separate video for that right thanks for watching this video please subscribe my channel so that you know you can get the latest feed of what all uh, videos I'm putting in YouTube okay till then thanks a lot goodbye